Okay, so this video is going to be on carbohydrates and some of the chemistry behind them. So let's get started. So when it comes to carbohydrates, they are one of the four categories of organic molecules. Carbohydrates, you know, are, are, high, in, are, are high in certain foods such as breads, pastas, fruits. You know, the other categories of organic molecules, you know, proteins, eggs are high in proteins, and the phospholipid bilayer in the picture, uh, you know, surrounds every cell. And so lipids is another category of organic molecule. And nucleic acids, such as DNA, and organic molecules are, are molecules built around carbon. Now, this video is only going to discuss carbohydrates. I have others if you want to learn uh, the characteristics of proteins and lipids and nucleic acids. So when it comes to carbohydrates, you know, some of them are used for energy purposes. For instance, glucose. In the picture, there's the chemical structure of glucose. Glucose is produced as a result of photosynthesis, and it's then broken down during cellular respiration in order to make adenosine triphosphate, ATP, the energy molecule of our cells. And other carbohydrates are used to build. They're used for structure. For instance, the green cell wall of plants is made from a carbohydrate called cellulose. And so this is a structural carbohydrate, cellulose, used to build the outer layer uh, called the cell wall of plants. Another structural carbohydrate is called chitin. You know, the exoskeleton of insects and crustaceans is made from a carbohydrate a structural carbohydrate called chitin. So carbohydrates are made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. For instance, in glucose, you can see glucose has 12 hydrogens, but only 6 carbons and 6 oxygens. It has twice as many hydrogens as carbon and oxygen. You can also see that in fructose. Now notice that glucose and fructose have the exact same formula, C6H12O6. You might be wondering, how are they different? Well, the 24 atoms are arranged in a different configuration. Molecules like this that have the same formula but are arranged a bit differently are called isomers. So glucose and fructose are good examples of isomers. Now, if you know the 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, if I were to give you this question, pretend a carbohydrate has four carbons. How many hydrogens and oxygens would it contain? I hope you would know the answer would be eight hydrogens and four oxygens. So when you study organic molecules, you're going to hear a lot about monomers and polymers. And an analogy of, of a monomer, it's an, a monomer, first of all, is a simple organic molecule. It's a building block, you know, such as a brick. But when you combine a bunch of bricks, you have not what's called a monomer, but a polymer, and in this case, you know, a brick wall. So we're going to be showing you how monomers are used to construct polymers as we go through carbohydrates and if you watch some of my other videos on organic molecules. So here are the categories of monomers and polymers. Now, this video is only going to uh, really touch on the bottom, the monomers called monosaccharides, and the polymers called a polysaccharide. So first of all, monosaccharides are the monomers of carbohydrates. They are the building blocks. Glucose is a great example of a monomer of a monosaccharide. It's a simple sugar, and glucose will often bond with other monosaccharides to form complex sugars. And before I go any further, I do want to mention that the word saccharide is Greek for sugar, so sugars are carbohydrates. So here is a very simplistic drawing of, let's say, glucose, the hexagon shape. And when, for instance, one monosaccharide bonds with another monosaccharide, this is called a disaccharide. Di is a prefix that means two. So two mono monosaccharides have been bonded together. But when multiple monosaccharides bond together, this is what is called a polysaccharide. You know, these are the complex sugars. Examples of this would be starch and glycogen and cellulose, which we're going to go into more detail in a few moments. Well, how do these bond together? How do these monomers bond to become polysaccharides? Well, there's a 
chemical process known as dehydration synthesis. And like the word implies, dehydration uh, in, implies the removal and the loss of water. And you'll see how that works in just a moment. But dehydration synthesis is what builds monomers into polymers. It's how all polymers are created. It's how many amino acids form a protein. It's how many nucleotides form a nucleic acid. It's how many fatty acids and glycerol form lipids. And like we're going to discuss in a moment, it's how monosaccharides bond to form polysaccharides. So here's the chemical formula of glucose plus fructose. On the left of the arrow, glucose plus fructose. So there's glucose and there's fructose. And in a dehydration synthesis, I've highlighted in red the H2O. In a dehydration synthesis reaction, these two monosaccharides, glucose on the left, fructose on the right, will bond together and with the help of enzymes water is removed and that bond between the two is established so now we have sucrose C12 H22O11 sucrose plus water this is how this is how monosaccharides bond to form in this case a disaccharide or we could have for instance you know four monosaccharides bonding to make a polysaccharide. But through dehydration synthesis is the name of the chemical reaction. So let's look at some polysaccharides in a little more detail. Polysaccharides, again, remember, are a long chain of monosaccharides. Now, the one pictured is the polysaccharide called starch. Starch is a plant polysaccharide. Now you know plants do photosynthesis and they make glucose, but sometimes they make more glucose than they use, so they want to store that glucose. So the glucoses will bond through dehydration synthesis into starch. And for simplicity you can see that I've shown uh, this picture right here. So here are some glucoses bonded together and as time goes by these starches, the starch molecule can be broken down and the energy can be released as the plant uh, as the plant has its cellular needs. Starches are high in various foods such as you know rice is high in starch and you know breads are high in starch and potatoes are high in starch. You know, another polysaccharide I want to mention is the animal version of starch, and, and that's a polysaccharide called glycogen. And glycogen is a way that animals can store energy that hasn't been used. So when glucose is, you know, consumed in our in our diet, in our food, and, and, and broken down, we will then have that leftover glucose that maybe wasn't used, and those glucoses will be bonded into glycogen. And in fact, glycogen is this enormous molecule. Over 30,000 glucose monomers make up a, glycog a molecule called glycogen. And so these glycogens are often stored in our liver and then are broken down throughout the day as needed. And then another polysaccharide dimension is cellulose. Cellulose is a structural polysaccharide. It's, you know, in the picture here, we have the yellow cell membrane or plasma membrane. This is the, uh, the semi-permeable layer of the cell that allows material in and out. And then there is the green cell wall that is pictured here. Now, the cell wall of plants is made from, uh, from a polysaccharide called cellulose. And for instance, you know, this explains why, you know, celery is so tough and fibrous. Celery is packed full of cellulose. And, you know, we have a real hard time digesting foods that have a lot of cellulose in them because we don't possess enzymes to break down cellulose. We, are, we actually break down, uh, for instance, celery because we have microscopic bacteria that live inside of our digestive tract that are able to do it for us since we don't possess the enzymes uh, to do it ourselves. Well, how are polysaccharides broken down into monosaccharides? And that's through a, a hydrolysis reaction. Hydro implies water, and lysis means to break down. So the addition of a water molecule will help to break down 
a polysaccharide into a monosaccharide. And in fact, hydrolysis is how all polymers are broken down into monomers. So it's not just how polysaccharides are broken down, but it's how, for instance, proteins are broken down into amino acids. It's how nucleic acids are broken down into nucleotides. It's how lipids are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. And it's how polysaccharides are broken down into monosaccharides. It's the opposite of a dehydration synthesis reaction, which we went over earlier. So here is a hydrolysis reaction of sucrose. Sucrose is the large C12H22O11 with the addition of water, with the addition of water and, uh, and an enzyme that's not pictured in my animation called sucrase. But through this reaction, the sucrose has been broken down into glucose on the left and fructose on the right. This is how in this case, a disaccharide was broken down into monosaccharides, but it's also how polysaccharides are broken down into monosaccharides. So before we're done, I want to refresh and just compare and contrast dehydration synthesis to hydrolysis. Dehydration synthesis is where, for instance, the, monom the monosaccharide glucose on the left and fructose on the right are going to bond together to make, for instance, a disaccharide. This is called sucrose. Again, it's called a dehydration synthesis reaction because water is removed. Now, underneath it, we're going to look at hydrolysis. And hydrolysis is really just the opposite. It's the breaking down. So here we have sucrose. And with the addition of water, sucrose will be broken down into glucose on the left and fructose on the right. So the two really are just uh, opposites of one another. And if you're in my biology class, we'll talk about this in more detail, the chapter two free response question. So there you have it. You know, if you're in my class, pause the video, try to answer these questions, you know, write them down on a separate sheet of paper. I'm happy to check your answers before class or after class one day. So uh, leave your comments in the box below and thanks for watching.